Salatu salam alike ya Rasulullah, salatu salam alike ya Habibullah, salatu salam alike ya Rahmatalil Alameen wa ala alika wa sahabihi ya Shafiq Mubibin, respected and honored Khalifa Yisrael Kali Baranpur, Hazrat Salam Allah Shah Baba Shirafi, respected and honored Mulan al Makhdoom Ali Jafar, elders, brothers, mothers, and sisters of Islam, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the cherished sustainer of the universe. Choices, blessings, and salutations upon his beloved Rasul, Rasul Ipur Nur, Hazrat Ahmed Mujtaba, Muhammad Mustafa, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah, I've been requested to speak tonight a little bit about the essence of worship and about that which Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala or Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said that has the power to change the taqdeer and destiny of someone. And what we are speaking about is as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Wa qala rabbukum mudu'ani. Astajib lakum, that ask me, make dua to me, and I will answer you. I will uh, respond to your dua. Many times we make our dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we think there is no response from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We think there is a delay in the response from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But actually there is, there is no delay. There is no delay. There is nothing between your dua and the response of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dua is answered immediately. It is only when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows you the answer of the dua that is what we are uncertain about. That is what we what we do not know. But otherwise the du'as of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the dua that you make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is always an answer for that. And there are many reasons as we know why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delays uh, giving us what we have asked for. Maybe we've asked for something and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that this in, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's infinite wisdom that this is not good for us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us something better. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask for something and, we, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows in His infinite wisdom that this what you have asked for, O oh my slave, is not good for you now, but it is good for you at a later time. So this is why we recite when we make our du'as to Allah, we take the wasila of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we say, Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil, ni'mal mawla wa ni'mal nasir. And basically when we recite this, we are handing over our du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this intention and with this um, statement that, Ya Allah, despite what I have asked, no matter what I have asked for, in my du'a to you, Ya Allah, whatever you see is better for me, Ya Allah, grant me that. This is why we say husband Allah wa ni'mal wakil. So so we should always be pleased with, with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put out for us. There's a very beautiful dua. Allahumma Allahumma rabbini bi qada'ik wa barik li fi qadrik hatta la uhibba ta'jila ma akharta wa la ta'khira ma ajjalta. So what are we asking? We are saying Allahumma rabbini bi qada'ik. Ya Allah, with whatever what has passed from my qada, whatever has passed, whatever has taken place already, Whatever you have ordained for me already that has passed, Raddani, Raddani, make me happy with that. Make me pleased, make me satisfied with, with whatever what has passed. And whatever is yet to, yet to come in my taqdeer, in my destiny, Barik Lifi. Grant me blessings in it. Grant me baraka in it. Grant me, allow it to be good for me. Allahumma rabbi li qadaik wa barik li fi qadrik hatta la uhibba ta'jila ma akharta wa la ta'khira ma ajjalta and bring me to such a point ya Allah that I would that, that I would not mind that those things that you have brought forward or expedited for me are delayed if it is your will or whatever you have delayed for me is brought forward Allah so which means you are trusting or placing your absolute trust in the timing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I want this now. And Allah has delayed it for you. You are pleased with that. And if something that you are asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I want it later, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has expedited it for you, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought it forward for you, you are satisfied with that also. So this is a very really beautiful dua that I should think we all should learn. And we should, should all have this mindset that we are absolutely pleased and happy with the timing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And hope is the important thing to hold on to. We know this. Hope is important. The sign of Iman is that a believer is always hopeful in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He always places his full trust and his full hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should always make this dua that, Ya Allah, I, I, I wish to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, hope, or I'm hopeful to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala merciful upon me when I, at the time of my death. I am hopeful to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala merciful upon me when I'm in my qadr. I'm hopeful to find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala merciful towards me when, when I stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. And this is a sign of a believer. If somebody does not have hope, 
then that is not the sign of a believer. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuously grants us that hope. May we always place our hope and our faith and our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how desperate a situation looks, no matter how testing a situation looks, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us about a man who will come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. His deeds will be weighed, everything will be even, Stevens, and he will need one more good deed to go to Jannah. And he will go looking out for, to, to somebody or ask people help. And one man will say, you know, I hardly have any deeds. I've got mostly bad deeds. I've got very few good deeds. You might as well take one of mine if it can help you and save you from Jahannam. You'll take that one deed, you present it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will tip the scales in his favor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, where did you get this from? I mean, Allah knows where we got it from. But this is now a lesson for us, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is explaining. And he tells Allah, this is where I got it from. And Allah will call that man. And that man who had hardly any good deeds, just bad, but who sacrificed his one good deed, Allah will enter him into Jannah al And Rasulullah says, another man will come, and his deeds will be weighed, and his, his bad will outweigh the, the good. And Allah Ta'ala will order him, go to Jahannam, and he will turn around and will run in the direction of Jahannam. He will run in the direction of Jahannam. Then Allah will say, okay, okay, just stop, stop. Where are you going so fast? And he will say, Ya Allah, in the dunya I hardly obeyed you. Today you issue me with instructions of to obey properly. <laughs> One time, the right to Jannah. And then Allah will be happy with him and Allah will enter him into Jannah. Then another man will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His deeds will be weighed and will be determined that he needs to enter the fire of Jahannam. And Allah will order him to go to Jahannam. And he'll turn around very slowly, very dejected, very sad. He'll lower, lower his head. You'll take a few steps, you'll stop, you'll turn around, you'll look towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Longingly, hopefully he looks towards Allah. Then he lowers his head again, turn around, he walks, takes a few more steps, stop, turns around, looking back at Allah. Allah says, what are you doing? And he'll say, Ya Allah, I read in the Quran Sharif, La taqna tu mi rahmatillah. Do not give up hope on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even though the situation is like that, that Allah, that you have already ordered me to the fire of Jahannam, I'm still not giving up hope, Ya Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter him also into Jannah. Yeah. Yeah. So no matter where we are in our lives, no matter what, what situations we find ourselves in, we can never, it is a sign of a believer, you cannot give up hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one particular dua, in fact many of the duas, but I want to concentrate on one particular dua, uh, or dhikr that we read in our Gyanush al-Kitab. It is the dua of Mawlana ya Mawlana wa ya Sami'u. In fact, this dua, if you read this dua, every line of this dua inspires so much hope. Allah, it inspires so much hope uh, in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a very beautiful dua and I think it's, a, it's quite a, a complete dua, alhamdulillah. We start with Mawlana, we're calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Mawla. Mawlana, na, indicates plurality, you know, it's plural, our Mawla. If I say Mawla'i, it means my Mawla. If I say Mawla'u, it means his Mawla, you know. Um, so Mawla'na, we say, um, we're calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Mawla. Mawla has different meanings also, as we know. In this instance, when we are talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and making dua, and saying Mawla'na, we are meaning our Lord. We are meaning our, our <laughs> Creator. We are meaning our, our, our Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, it denotes divinity. It devotes, it denotes divinity. Then Mawla has other meanings also. As Allah, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith sharif, Man kuntu Mawla fa'alinu Mawla. About Ali radiallahu ta'ala, whoever I am the patron of, Ali is his patron as well. So Mawla has a different meaning here. It can be applied to people as well. In Allah, um, uh, what is the verse of the group? Glorious Quran Sharif. In Allah wa Mawlahu wa Jibrilu wa Salih al Mu'mineen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam also as Mawla. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the Salih al Mu'mini, the pious servants, the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Mawla as well. But in that case, Mawla has a different meaning. And then some of you might wonder that why do we call our, our leaders and our aima, our shuyukh, our ulama, we call them Mawlana. When we call them Mawlana, it is actually a, the meaning of respect or a sign of respect, a sign of honor because they are learned or, 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 or we, 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 we keep them in esteem and this is why especially in the Indo-Pak subcontinent and even other places in the world also not just the Indo-Pak subcontinent where they refer to the ulama as Maulana. If you go to Turkey for example they use the term Mevlana. Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi alayhi rahmah is not known as Sheikh or Alam is known as 
Mevlana, which is in fact Maulana. So it's not only in South Africa and the Indo Pak continent. So it is permissible to call your um, your your religious leaders and your shuyuk shu shu Maulana. Because it does not devote, uh, denote any divinity when you, uh, when you use that term uh, for, for any human being. Only when you use it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we say, Mawlana ya Mawlana, ya Allah, our Mawla, our Mawla, wa ya Sami'u li dua du'ana. And oh, the one who listens to our du'as. Bi hurmati Muhammad. We can now hear again. You know, you, you find this dua all over you. The Sharf al Anam uh, in, in the Barzanji, Bihurmati uh, Muhammad. Uh, you can see all the scholars of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the scholars of the previous scholars of the deen, all of them use the wasila of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everybody, and they teach us about the wasila of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it's not only used once in this dua, it's used various times in this dua. Bihurmati Muhammad, la taqta rajaana. What do we say, Ya Allah? Do not sever my hope that I have in you. Do not cut the hope that I have in you. Ya Allah, let it be such that the hope that I have in you will be everlasting, Ya Allah. Let it be continuous, Ya Allah. Preserve me in such a state that I'm always hopeful of your rahmah and hopeful of your mercy. So this is what we plead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first stanza of this dua. La taqata'a raja'ana, Ya Allah. Keep us always hopeful. Keep, let us always have that hope in you, which means if we keep that hope, we are holding on to our Iman. And when we go into the second line, to the second stanza, Fi rajwaka mawlana. Yeah, again, Allah, we speak about hope. We say, Fi rajwaka mawlana asharna li ajfana. What does this mean? If you look at the translation loosely, it, it says that, Ya Allah, in your hope, or in our hope of you, asharna li ajfana, that our, um, our eyelids have risen. Our eyelids have risen. But if you look at the word asharna, Asharna comes from the word Sahar. Sah, you get Sahar with a Ha, you get Sahar with a Ha. With a ha. The Sahar with a Ha indicates the time before Fajr. So that is where the word Suhoor comes from, the word Sihri, they come from that. And the Sahar with a Ha has a different meaning. That means to wake up from a slumber of ghaflat and unconsciousness. That is what, what that Sahar means. So when we say Asharna li ajfana, we are um, oh, um, what we are in fact saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, in our eternal hope for you and in our desire of your hope, our eyes have woken up from a sleep of unconsciousness. And we want to be turned, our eyes want to be turned in such a way that we have full awareness of you, Ya Allah. This is, this is how beautiful this dua is. And we, when we end of that stanza with Thamnun Ya Mawlana, Ya Allah, Thamnun is the fa'li um, amr. We, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are requesting Thamnun. Ya Allah, make ihsan upon me. Thamnun, Thamnun, what is it? Thamnun, Thamnun, Ya Mawlana, Ya Allah, make ihsan upon me. Fadla, Fadla, what type of ihsan? Thamnun Ya Mawlana, Fadla. The ihsan, Ya Allah, that I want you to make on me should be a fadl ihsan, which means an ihsan that will elevate me. An ihsan that will, an ihsan that will, in a favor that will benefit me and that will greatly elevate me and grant me a fadl in your eyes, a greatness in your eyes. La tansana. Do not forget me, Ya Allah. La tansana. And when you say, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forget, but when we say la tansana, it in fact means, Ya Allah, do not turn away from me. Ya Allah, keep your gaze fixed on me, Ya Allah. Do not turn your gaze away from me in any way. So this is what this line is. And we should be careful when we recite this line. There's many times when we recite this, we say, Fadlun ya mawlana fadlallahi tansa. We say fadlallahi. Sometimes we say that. So the way we actually changing it, it sounds like fadlallahi, the fuzzle of Allah. Fadlallahi. Tansana, you say forget me, you know. So we should actually read this line properly. We must, you shouldn't say Fadlallahi Tansana. Fadlallah, Fadlallah Tansana. So if you go through this um, dua, you know, wa aslih ra ya Rabbi mahyana wa dunya na wa ukhra na, you asking Allah subhanahu wa taala, um, ya Allah. Um, uh, make my life for aslih ya Rabbi mahyana 
make my 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 life a good life ya allah if i am good ya allah then make my life better if i'm not good then transform me allah reform me ya allah asli ya rabbi reform me to such a way that my dunya will be good dunya na wa ukhra na my dunya will be good and my akhirat will be good وَجَمِّلْ وَجْدَ مَرْعَانَا And Ya Allah, whatever seeds I am sowing, whatever plantation that I am planting here, make that beautiful. What does that mean? Whatever good I am doing on this dunya. We do the good in the dunya to send the sawab for the year after. The good that we do, our salah, our ibadat, and everything that we're doing on this dunya, the reward we hope to gain by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're saying, Ya Allah, beautify that. All the seeds that we are sowing, which means, all the ibadat that we are doing, all the worship that we are doing, whether it is the fard, whether it is the sunnah, whether it is the nawafil, whatever we're doing, beautify that, Ya Allah, so that our rewards are good by you, Ya Allah. وَلَا تُخَيْدَ الْمَسْعَانَا And do not let what we are doing, do not, do not destroy it, do not, do not let it become spoiled or tempered in any way. So this is the beautiful dua that we make to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and I mean, the translation is in the book. You can read the translations. Everybody's familiar with the dua. And I'm sure you, you are familiar with the translation as well. But what I just want to say is that I find this dua to be a very complete dua. And I think it's a dua that we should not only be reciting in our in our Mawlid Sharif and our Gyaru Sharif, but when we make our personal and private duas to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's almost like an encompassing dua. Everything is contained in there because whatever you ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever you require and need from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is covered in this dua. So we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this hidayah and the to benefit from this, inshallah. I mean, thumma, I mean. So one thing that we must also remember, we speak about hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also the thing that impedes the dua from being accepted is that we should look at ourselves. You know, dua cannot just be one dimensional where we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer. But the second dimension means we need to analyze ourselves and ask ourselves, why is my dua being delayed? Or why is my dua not being answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the third dimension of what am I going to do to correct what is wrong with me? This was the way of the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When something never used to go their way, something used to go wrong, they used to look, you know, introspect, they used to look at themselves. What is, what is it that I did that is wrong? So this is what we need to do. We need to look at ourselves. We need to look at, at, at our sins and be careful of our sins because the sins is one thing that prevents your dua from being accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, when he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Musa alayhi salam, Ya Musa, um, Ya Musa, if'al ma urid, akun laka kama turid. Do as I instruct and I will do as you request. Subhanallah. So Allah tells Musa alayhi salam, do as I instruct you to do, and I will do as you request me to do. Abu Talib, the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, says to him, Oh my nephew, I have never seen a Lord so eager to, fill, to fulfill the needs of a servant. And then Rasulullah ﷺ replied, If you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will please you. Allah And that is so true when we make this to us. It is Ibn Jawzi who said that, um, he said that when you, Keep yourself away from sin. When you when you stay away from sin, and when you try to control your hawa and your desires, and you and you try to control your nafs to sin uh, from sin, and you abstain from that sin, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will elevate you to such a status that when you merely make a suggestion, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will fulfill it for you. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You merely make a suggestion, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will fulfill it for you. And Ibn Qudama al-Maqdisi, who is who is a student of Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilali, Qaddas Allah Surah Al-Aziz, he says in his kitab, Al-Ruqa wal-Buqa, Al-Ruqa wal-Baka, he says in his kitab, he tells the story of Hazrat Sultan um, Ibrahim bin Adham, radiallahu ta'ala an, that he was sitting with some of the disciples on the mountain, and he told them that there are some servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that if they were to tell this mountain to move, the mountain would move. And immediately the mountain started shaking. The mountain started vibrating and shaking and trying to move. And then Ibrahim bin Adbahim, he addresses the mountain. He says, no, no, no. I did not give you the instruction to move. I was just merely narrating a story. Allah Akbar. I didn't give you the instruction. I was just merely narrating a story. And this elucidates what was said by Ibn Jawzi, that when you stay away from sin and you control your, your, your nafs, you control your hawa, Allah will elevate you to that status that you merely make a suggestion and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill that for you. 
So if you want your du'as to be accepted, if you want our du'as to be accepted, we try to abstain from sin, stay away from sin. This is the greatest way of getting our du'as accepted, inshallah. Allah SWT grant us that, inshallah. And then also there's another reason sometimes why the du'a is not accepted. There was a ta'ab, tabi'i by the name of Yahya al-Baka. Yahya al-Baka, great tabi'i, radiallahu ta'ala, and he has a dream, and in his dream, he is he's, he's speaking to Allah in his dream, and he says, Ya Rabbi, kam da'awtuka, wa la tujibuni. He says, Ya Rabbi, kam da'awtuka, wa la tujibuni. Ya Allah, I make so much dua to you, and you do not answer me. <laughs> Tabi, eh? he says, Ya Allah, I make so much dua to you, wa la tujibuni, and you are not answering me. And he hears the voice in his dream. فَقَالَ يَا يَحْيَى It's like Allah is replying to him, Oh Yahya, إِنِّي أُحِبُّ أَنْ أَسْمَعَ صَوْتَكَ Allah Akbar. Oh Yahya, I love listening to your voice. I love hearing your voice. I love it when you make dua to me. I love it that you are asking me. And I love to listen to your dua over and over and over again. So that could also be another reason. Maybe Allah SWT loves your voice. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you to such an extent that when you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is saying, look at my servant, Allah, but He's asking me, but He's asking in such a beautiful way. He's asking in such a loving way. And He's always hopeful in me. Let me delay. He took that and said, Ya Allah, why didn't you ask Him? I said, no, no, no. I want to hear His voice again. I want to hear it over and over. Look at the time that He's getting up. He's getting up 4 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the morning and this is the time he's pleading to me. Everybody else is sleeping, the night is quiet and he's making dua to me. I love that of him. I want to hear it. Oh, I'm going to give him and I'm going to give him more than what he's asking for. But I love listening to his voice. So may we be of those who first of all abstain from sin and may we be of those whom Allah, whose voices Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love. May our voices become beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the voice of Nabi Yunus alayhi salatu salam, when he was in the fish of the, the stomach of the fish, when Allah asked, can you hear that voice? And then they said, Ya Allah, we recognize the voice. So to ma'roof, we recognize the voice. Walakin makanun ajib. But the location is different, Ya Allah. It's not a land, it's in the, it's in the sea. But they said, so to ma'roof, that is the beloved voice of the, the voice of your beloved Yunus alayhi salatu mm-hmm. So his voice was known in the sama. Uh-huh. His voice is known in the sama. We want our voices to be known here. Yeah? We should do our ibadat and whatever service and khidmat we do so that our voices could be beloved to Allah and His Rasul and the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did not, they did, they did, they, our intentions not be that I want to be known or I want my voice to be known and everybody must know who, know who I am. As long as the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala know who you are, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making your ta'arif in a different mahfil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the sincerity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us rujoo from our sins, inshallah. May we be the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May our voices be the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillah.